the main thing about Islam it's about the pure monotheism about worshipping one God there is none worthy of worship but the almighty God this was the message preached by all the previous prophets including Prophet Abraham, Prophet Moses, Prophet Jesus, Prophet David all the prophets told the same message that God our Lord is one none beside him and put two lines under none beside him so there is no partners to God no sons, no daughters, no family no idols, no image so don't worship anyone with the Almighty God. This is the key to salvation. And this was the main message of all the prophets. And even Jesus himself used to pray to God. So he himself used to pray. He never tell people, you must worship me beside God. Or pray to me beside God. Or worship me beside God. You won't find him in any explicit statement saying or claiming that he is divine being beside God. He himself used to pray to God. And luckily if you see how he used to pray to God. He used to pray by bowing and prostrating down on the ground. Same like how we Muslims believe. So when a person, when a Christian becomes Muslim, you don't lose Jesus, but you actually correct your belief about him. But, but if, you, if the word Christian means a true follower of Christ, then Muslims are the, the best Christians. If you close your eyes now and you draw a picture for Jesus, you will draw a picture of a bearded man with long garments and, and his, 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 his mother used to wear a scarf, same like like most of the Muslim women, same like that. Jesus was bearded, Jesus was circumcised on the seventh day, who does that? We do that. Jesus fasted for 40 days, who do that? We Muslims do that. Jesus prayed to one God, we pray to one God. Same like this. So you're not going to lose Jesus. But just correct that part of the belief that there is only one God, none. But the worship is only to God. So Islam is a pure monotheistic faith. Both Muslims and Jews, even Jews, they also agree that God Almighty is not a triune God. It's not a trinity God. It's only one God. So you and the Jews also agree to that, to that, to that concept. Okay? So the only difference is, is just about mainly this one. About believing in one God and considering Jesus to be a messenger of God. To be a prophet of God. Not to be part of God or a divine being or a son of God or God himself like how so many Christian denominations and sects uh, claim. No, it is only one God and this God is the one that we should worship. We call him in Arabic Allah. So Allah is the same word that is used by all Arab speakers. It's not, it's not just a word specifically for Muslims. Actually, Arab Christians use the same word Allah. Arab Jews use the same word Allah. So don't think that the word Allah is a word that only Muslims are doing, using it. Even the Arab, Arab Christians, Arab Jews, because Arabism is, a, is a, nation, a nation. It's not a religion. So some Arabs are Christians, some Arabs are Jews, some Arabs are like that. So all Arabs, regardless of their faith, they use the same word Allah. When they refer to God, they say Allah. So they want to say Jesus is the son of God, they say Jesus is the son of Allah. You understand? So, so this word Allah is the same God who's called in the Christianity the Father. This is the God that we are worshiping in Islam, the only one God that we are worshiping. But we don't, con we don't consider the term Father to be a biological Father or the term Son of God to be a biological Son. God doesn't have any sons, no biological sons, no biological... God is God. He's God. No, he doesn't have a wife. He doesn't beget children. He's God. Right? So the, we are all his servants. But that term, father and son, is, was actually a metaphor, a metaphorical term. It means that he's our guardian, he's our shelter, he's the, like the pop. The pop means father, by the way. Like the priest, they call him father in church. It doesn't mean that he's your real father. No, it means that he is our guardian, the one who takes care of the church, etc. Likewise, so when we hear such terms, we shouldn't use these terms to prove, oh, but Jesus called God father. Yes, but what you call God, so you call God father probably the same. So it doesn't mean that he is... That he is the, the real father to Jesus or that is a proof of divinity. It's not a proof of divinity. Right. So, so that's basically when it comes to the belief. We believe in one God. We believe in all the messengers of God. We don't, re, we don't reject any of them. So we don't say we believe in Muhammad and we reject Jesus. Or we take Jesus and we, take, or we reject Moses. We have to, in order to become a Muslim, you have to accept all the prophets, including Jesus, Moses, David, all of them. All of them came from the same God. It's not our job to judge who's better. That's God's job, not our job. We accept all of them. We love all of them. We respect all of them. Okay? The third belief is that we believe in the existence of angels. You believe in that already. So we don't have to spend much of time speaking about the existence of angels since you already believe it. We believe in the day of judgment. You already believe in that. So we don't have to spend also a lot of time. But there will be a day of judgment where God will judge everyone, or, or revive all the dead people, and then God will judge. And only successful people on that day will be those who worship one God, and submitting, submitted themselves to the true teachings of this one God, they go to paradise. Paradise in Islam is real life, eternal, physical life, not just for the spirit, as in some Christian sects. No, it is only for, it is for body and soul. So you go there, real life with your body and soul, living there, eating, drinking, marrying, enjoying all what you missed in this worldly life, there's no death. 
there is no death in paradise. So it is eternal life of enjoyment. Okay? And the hellfire is the same thing. So these are basically the, the main beliefs of Islam. The main beliefs in Islam. Then beside these main beliefs, there is the, 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 the rest of the teachings are moral teachings, which none, none of you will disagree with. The same moral teaching that were taught by all the prophets. Don't kill, don't steal, be good to your family, be good to your neighbor, speak the truth, don't cheat. Islam is a complete moral system that took from all the lives of all the prophets. So by you becoming a Muslim, you actually benefit from the teachings, the moral teachings of Jesus, the moral teachings of Moses, the moral teachings of Muhammad, the moral teachings of all the prophets. So the complete system for how you, how you walk, how you deal with your neighbor, how you speak, how you, when you travel, what you do, when the, there is a complete way of, of life. So Islam adds to you, right? Then we have the occasional rituals, called rituals. These are the, what you do in order to make you, to make you closer to God and connected to God. So these occasional rit rituals are once a year or once in a lifetime. Fasting, this is once a year. We fast once a year from dawn time till sunset. This is what comes once a year, the month of Ramadan. You, hear, you heard about it. Then we got, we got after that zakah, the charity. The charity is also once a year. It's a must upon every rich Muslim. If you're not rich, it's not a must. A must to do what? To give 2.5% of your annual savings to the poor, if you are rich. If you're not rich, you're not obliged to do that. So imagine if all the rich people of the world give 2.5% of their annual saving to the poor. There will be no poverty, no starvation, no conflicts, no envy, no problems. So that's basically what Islam is teaching. Right. Then the, the other practice is called the Hajj. The Hajj comes once in a lifetime. If you need it once in a lifetime, you're done. And it is only a must if you are able to. If you have the finance to go, if you have the ability to go, then it's a must upon you. To go once in a lifetime to visit the first place of worship on earth that was built in Mecca. Built by who? By Prophet Adam, peace be upon the first man. And it was rebuilt by Prophet Abraham and Prophet Ishmael in that same place. That same place that in which Prophet Muhammad was born. So, so the, the, going there once in a lifetime, visiting that place called the Hajj, and doing certain rituals of, of worship there. The, the only daily practice that a Muslim do is called the prayer, the five times prayer. This is the only daily practice. So don't confuse yourself. The only daily practice is, beside manner, manners and morals, is just the prayer. You can pray everywhere. You can pray in any pure soil. Any place where you find uh, clean, you can pray in. So, and the prayer takes you about two, two, three minutes, five minutes, and you're done with the prayer. So there's no excuse to leave the prayer. This prayer connects you to God. It's like the provision to the soul. Same like how you have uh, your body need meals every day, your soul also need meals. The meals of the soul is the prayer. It keeps you connected, keeps your spirit up. So you can, you can face the difficulties of life, etc. Because even the prayer gives you strength. Makes you connected to God. It makes you humble. It makes you not to worry so much about the worldly affairs. So you are protected from depression, from sadness through this prayer. It's so, so great. So this, these are the, the main practices. Beside that, the key to enter into Islam, the step in, it is called the shahad, the, the confession of faith. What are we doing now? If you believe in these beliefs, then it means you are already a Muslim from inside. Even if you didn't call yourself a Muslim. The word Muslim literally means a submissive servant of God. Anyone who submitted himself to God is called a Muslim. That's why we consider Islam to be the religion of all the prophets. Islam is not a new religion founded by Prophet Muhammad. It's a hoax. Prophet Muhammad is the last messenger of Islam, of submission to God. So that submission to God was already there right from the beginning of time. Adam submitted to God, Moses submitted to God, Abraham submitted to God, David submitted to God, Jesus submitted to God. All the prophets submitted to God. So they were all Muslims. And they called the people to submission. Even in the Bible, you, you, hear, you hear Jesus, you say in Hebrew 5 and 7, it says, Jesus was heard because of his reverence, submission to God. He submitted to God. He said, I didn't come to do my own will, but to do the will of God who sent me. This is exactly Islam, the meaning of Islam. To submit yourself to God by obeying his teachings and keeping the commandments of God. That's basically Islam. So if you do that, you are a Muslim. That, even if you didn't call yourself a Muslim. So it's not the label that saves you. Your salvation is not in any label. It is in living the life of submission to the one God. And that's what we call it Islam in Arabic. Right. So the first step in that is to, to say, okay, I'm ready, I'm, I'm submitting. I'm going to submit. To submit, you say, I bear witness there is only one God. None to, none to be worshipped except this one God. And I bear witness that Jesus is a messenger of God. And I bear witness that Muhammad is a messenger of God. You believe in that? Right. So raise your finger like that. Are you doing it now? Say after me. I bear witness there is none worthy of worship except Allah. I bear, witness I bear witness that Jesus, that Jesus is, a of Allah. is a messenger of Allah. I bear witness, I bear witness that Muhammad, Muhammad is the final messenger of Allah. 
Great. We said the English, it is recommended to say the translation in Arabic. So you're going to repeat after me the Arabic translation of that. Say, Ashhadu Allah ilaha illa Allah. Ashhadu Anna Isa Rasulullah. Ashhadu Anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. Allahu Akbar. Takbir. Congratulations. <laughs> so happy for you. MashaAllah. MashaAllah. Well done, Alex. Thank you so much. MashaAllah. So happy. Everyone, congratulate your brother, inshaAllah. Over 2 billion Muslims all over the world, your brothers and sisters. MashaAllah. Alhamdulillah. Take it step by step. Don't overload yourself. Yeah. Take it easy. MashaAllah. 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 So happy for you. Take it